Hey y'all, it's Stacy with southernbite.com. Let me show you how to make my classic sweet potato pie. If you love this recipe, hit like and then subscribe to the channel. That way you're notified every time we post great new recipe videos. Now to start with any sweet potato pie recipe, we have to talk about sweet potatoes. When you head to the grocery store, you're gonna find a couple varieties. If it's a fancy grocery store, you might even see white sweet potatoes or even sweet potatoes with a purple flesh. You're just gonna to wanna to opt for your generic orange fleshed sweet potatoes. These might look a little different. The thing is, is that the grocery store is not necessarily gonna tell you which variety that they offer, but if it's a generic yellow flesh sweet potato, either one will work. Just keep in mind that sometimes the flesh will be differing colors. You may go to one grocery store and pick out sweet potatoes and end up with a sweet potato pie that has a deep, gorgeous orange color, and another time it may look a little more brown. They're probably gonna taste about the same, but the difference is just the variety of sweet potatoes. For our recipe today, we're gonna need about a pound of sweet potatoes. That's gonna equate to about one and a half to two medium-sized sweet potatoes. We're gonna need these sweet potatoes cooked. We have a couple different options. The microwave is obviously quick and easy, but I love to roast these sweet potatoes for this sweet potato pie. The high temp roast of the oven caramelizes the sugar and intensifies that sweet potato flavor. So that really is my preferred method of getting these cooked. To do that, I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees and I've got a rimmed baking sheet lined with aluminum foil here just to make cleanup a little bit easier. I'm gonna poke some holes here in my sweet potatoes and I'm gonna pop them in the oven for about 45 minutes or until they're nice and soft and cooked through. If you wanna be technical, you can use an instant read thermometer and you want the internal temperature of these potatoes to read somewhere between 208 and 212 degrees. All right, while our sweet potatoes cook, let's talk about pie crust for a second. Now, you can certainly make a homemade pie crust. That's the best way to get the best flavor but not everybody has time or the skill to make a homemade pie crust. So you can choose one of those frozen pie crusts that comes in the aluminum pan, or you can use one of these rolled pie crusts because it's super convenient. They're pretty easy to work with and you get to use your own pan, which is what we're gonna do today. Now, as the instructions on the box probably tell you, you're gonna wanna let this rolled pie crust, and these are the ones from the refrigerated section, they come two in a box. You're gonna wanna let this rest at room temperature for about 15 minutes. This allows everything to soften a little so that it's a little bit easier to work with. Now you can absolutely just unroll this and pop it right on your pie pan, but I think that it works a little bit better if we give it a little help. I like to unroll it on my counter or like my cutting block here. But typically this has a layer of flour on it so you don't necessarily need to put flour down. But what I like to do is right when you get to that edge where it was rolled up the tightest, you'll kind of see where it starts to split a little and sometimes it's hard to get that edge out. Um, so I just like to take a rolling pin and just give this a little help from the center out to the edge all the way around. Just roll it out a little bit and it helps to flatten out that edge over there. And it gives us a little bit more to work with when we make the crimped edge for our pie pan. Now, when it comes to your pie pan, I traditionally like to use a metal pie pan. I feel like this is gonna give your crust the best chance at getting nice and golden brown. And I love the convenience of these non-stick pans because they mean that, of course, your crust is not gonna stick, making them much easier to get out. The problem is that a non-stick pan the crust is not gonna stick to. And what that means is that sometimes the crust may slide down the edge of your pie pan. I'm gonna show you a few things that we're gonna do to try to keep that from happening. Just keep in mind that sometimes it's inevitable and it may not look the best, but it's gonna taste just as delicious. So I've got my crust here that I rolled out. I'm gonna flip it over so that we put that frayed edge that was rolled up tightest on the bottom, that way we don't see it. And I'm gonna center this right over our pie plate. Now, the goal here is to get this as centered as possible so we have a similar overlap all the way around. The thing to keep in mind when you're working with pie crust in general is that gluten, which is that protein that happens when you mix flour and liquid, has a memory of sort. And when you stretch it too thin, oftentimes it will shrink back down, which of course means our pie crust is gonna shrink. So we're gonna try to avoid that. So don't stretch your dough too much. Try to be gentle with it and gently work it into the edges of your pie crust, sometimes repositioning it to make sure that we're as centered in the middle of our pie pan as possible. 
and I'm just going to slowly work my way around, just sliding that edge down rather than stretching to try to prevent our crust from shrinking too much. And I'm just going to gently fold that excess over the edge there, just kind of working my way around. And I'm going to make sure that we've got it down in that corner of the pan there. And if you happen to have not gotten this super centered, you can use some kitchen shears or a knife and trim off the edge. But this is pretty evenly distributed around the edges of our pan. What we're going to do now is kind of crimp this edge. So what I'm going to do is just kind of, you can kind of see how much overlap we have here. We're going to take and kind of just fold that in half and pinch it together. And we're going to work all the way around just folding that excess crust in half and pinching it together. Once we've done that all the way around, we're gonna go around one more time and just pinch it one more time just to make sure that we've got that edge sealed together. And now we can give this crust edge a decorative look. So you can use a fork and use the tines of a fork to make a design. There are tons of different things that you can do. I just like to use my fingers just to create a scalloped edge just using my thumb and forefinger on my left hand and my thumb on my right hand and just kind of work around, just pinching that dough, giving us that scalloped edge look. The other thing to keep in mind here is we wanna keep this dough as cold as possible. So while our potatoes finish cooking, I wanna pop this in the fridge just to keep the fats in here nice and cold till we need it. All right, once our potatoes are cooked all the way through and are cool enough to handle, we're gonna peel them. And that's just as simple as just pulling that potato peel back. You may find that a knife is helpful. Sometimes just your fingers are the best tool. Keep in mind that sometimes sweet potatoes do get a little dark when they're cooked, but this will brighten up as we bake our pie. Now you're going to need about, as I said before, about one pound of sweet potatoes. Once that's mashed, it should equate to about one and a half cups. I have questions sometimes from folks about using a canned sweet potato puree and you can certainly do that. You'll want about one cup of that because of course it's a lot more dense than say this is. And just something to show you here, these sweet potatoes were brought from the same store out of the same bin at the same time, but look at the difference in the color. Peel these, put them all in my bowl here because the next thing we're gonna do is get these mashed up nice and smooth. It's important that we get them mashed up really well so that we don't have chunks of sweet potato in our sweet potato pie. I found that the easiest way to get these potatoes mashed up is just to use a hand mixer. All right, it may take a few minutes, but you wanna make sure that those are mashed up really well so that we have a nice smooth pie. To this, I'm going to add one cup of firmly packed light brown sugar. Dark brown sugar works just fine and adds a little more of a molasses flavor. So if that's something that you like, you could certainly use the dark. I'm gonna add a half a cup of unsalted butter that I've melted here. And I've got two eggs at room temperature. We wanna make sure that we're cracking on a flat surface. When we crack on the edge of the bowl, that edge of the bowl will sometimes force shell fragments up into the egg. When we crack on a flat surface, we kinda of help to prevent that. And it's much easier to fish shell fragments out of a small bowl than it is out of a big bowl. If that does happen, just use half of your eggshell to scoop in there and those tiny shell fragments will almost magnetize to this and make it a lot easier to get it out. All right, so we're gonna add our eggs here and give this a mix. All right, next we're gonna add what I think is one of the secret ingredients to the most creamy sweet potato pie, evaporated milk. A couple notes, this is evaporated milk, not sweetened condensed milk. When you head to the grocery store, you're gonna probably see this in a couple different sizes. This is a five ounce can. You may also see it in a 12 ounce can or an 11 ounce can. You may also see it in a carton. You wanna make sure that you're using five ounces. If you have to buy it in a larger container, just use a measuring cup and make sure that you're getting five ounces. Now evaporated milk is exactly what it sounds like. It's milk that's had some of the liquid evaporated. So it has a super creamy, delicious flavor that really amps up sweet potato pie. All right, that's gonna go right in. I'm gonna combine this. 
Now we're gonna give our sweet potato pie some of those classic fall warm spicy flavors. I'm adding a teaspoon of cinnamon. I've got a quarter of a teaspoon of grated nutmeg. I've got a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger. I'm adding about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and about a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring or vanilla extract. And then we're just gonna mix again. All right, I've got our pie crust out of the fridge here. And all we're gonna do is just transfer our pie filling mixture right into our prepared crust. All right, this is gonna go in a 350 degree oven for 55 to 60 minutes or until it's golden brown and nice and set. All right, after about 60 minutes, our pie is nice and golden brown around the edges. It's set. For those of you who are being technical, you can use an instant read thermometer and ensure that the center of your pie is at about 175 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna to wanna to let this rest four hours at a bare minimum, 24 hours is even better because with custard pies like this, if you slice them right now, they're gonna to be too runny and they're just gonna fill in that empty space. Allowing the pie rest is gonna improve, improve the flavor and the texture, so give it some time to rest. All right, once this is rested, it's gonna be a lot easier to cut. It's gonna be a lot easier to serve. I'm gonna put my pie server just under the edge here. You can see how nicely that's set up. It's got that beautiful sweet potato color. You can serve this just like this with a dollop of fresh whipped cream, even a scoop of ice cream. And it's a delicious addition to your Thanksgiving menu, or it's great any time of the year. And the great thing is that you can make this advance to save yourself a little time the day of. Folks, you can find this recipe by heading over to the website at southernbite.com and just search classic sweet potato pie. Y'all enjoy.